This is for you today, my friend. It's Gospel Track for the Lure, man. Just check it out. Read it. Got a Zoom Bible study down there, a YouTube channel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You believe in Jesus? I don't know. This your girl right here? That's my mama. Your mom? Oh, I'm sorry. See, she looks a lot younger. Yeah, she looks a lot younger. Let me know I yeah. love that. I do. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I bad, I bad, my bad. I do, I do no. believe in Jesus, though. I grew up uh, going to a Christian church. Christian? Yeah. What, what turned you away, bro? I feel like the world turned me away. The world. Being, getting out to the world, basically being distracted. Thing, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just... Cause I've been I've been incarcerated before, yeah. So then you know, at that time of God, the Bible. yeah, you get closer. For sure. Then you get out here, you in the world. It, it, it's like it's uh, it's not not too much of a good world out here. Oh right no, now, it's not. Right now, at least yeah. I'm like, you know, considering the area or wherever, you know, you land at in the world, you know what you around is like. It'd be hard to try to. You know what I'm saying? Just stay, stay yeah. positive, minded, close to God, kind of. Yeah, you know, yeah. Turning away from, you know what I'm saying, the demons or the devil. They everywhere. Yeah, they are, you man. You know what I'm saying? So, they no more. But everybody, you know what I'm saying, be having the phases to help them get closer to them. So yeah. I believe in them. You feel me? I go through stuff, but I believe in them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Yeah. How long have y'all been doing the YouTube thing? I. Uh, Honestly, like six months, seven months, eight months. Okay. The Lord told me to start doing it, man. I used to preach the gospel way before I ever did that. Okay. But uh, I started doing it just out of faith, man, of what God told me to do, being being obedient. Okay. But uh, I also do a Zoom Bible study. Zoom Bible studies right here, bro. Every Thursday at 8 p.m. Amen. And uh, I want you to know, man. I don't know why. It's crazy you said you were incarcerated because it's crazy. I seen I seen like chains and I seen like uh, I seen like a generational curse, bro. Of like every time you try to go a couple steps forward, it's like you get drawn back, yeah. drawn back. And and I just seen the Lord saying that it came from your father, man. And that's why you had you had uh, you had problems with your father, man. He came through some of the same things that you've experienced in right. your life. And no matter, even if you don't want to be like him, you've ended up just like him. Right. And you don't know why. And the Lord's saying it's a generational curse. On, and if bro. that thing gets broken, that demon no longer has power over your life. Right. And right. I even see you having like bad dreams and bad visions, even while you were incarcerated. Right. And the Lord was trying to awake you and turn you away Come from on. what you were in. He was actually speaking to you. Okay. And he was showing. He even showed you some people around you that were actually like really bad, even while you were okay. incarcerated. Okay. And I see. I don't know why. I, I see God breaking the links. Okay. Breaking the links around you, bro. And then He's gonna break the link in you. Okay. You see what I'm saying? All right. Yeah. You want to But you gotta know Him. Okay. You want to pray? Yeah, 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 check yeah, this yeah. out, bro. Check this out. Hey, Say, Jesus, Jesus, send me free. Send me free. I want to know you. I want to know you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Send me free. Send me free. From all generational From curses. All generational curses. Any demonic power. Any demonic power. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Check this out. Father God, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for this brother right here. Father, I just break every generational curse and curse on his life right now, and I command any demon, any any any, any type of spirit of witchcraft, I command you to come out right now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. I command any spirit that uh, tried to try to chain him, Father God, that's tried, that tried to bound him, I command to be broken and loose now by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. Right now, any spirit of anger, any spirit of violence, I command you to come out now in Jesus' name, Father God. I pray right now for the fire of God. Are you feeling anything? Father God, I pray right now, Father, for you to reveal the love of God right now, to touch his heart with the Holy Spirit right now now in Jesus name. Father, I pray you touch him right now. Holy Spirit, touch him. Fill him up with your fire, God, and let him live a life for you, consecrated, holy, sanctified, justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may be able to know your death and resurrection and be blessed in all that he does, Father. I pray for every weapon fashioned against this brother shall not prosper. Every tongue that's risen against him in judgment, I condemn now for the inheritance of the Lord of thy servants and his righteousness. I speak life and peace over this brother. Amen. Amen. And amen. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no problem, man. How do you feel, man? No problem. Man, I feel good, man. Amen, brother. I bless you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. You feel that weight come off of you, bro? Yeah. Yeah, man, look, he's already signed. <laughs> I appreciate that, bro. Oh, I, I used to pray more than you think, man. You wow. You feel that, you got to feel the Holy Spirit, bro? Yeah. You feel the Holy Ghost? Yeah, most definitely, man. Feel, wow. man. Everything happens for a reason, man. Yeah. yeah. Your blessing, bro. I'm going I'm to check you out, man. Yeah, Zoom Bible study every Thursday, 8 p.m. Same out. link, bro. So every Thursday? Every Thursday, tomorrow, 8 p.m., same link. Okay. Literally yes, tomorrow. Sir. Every Thursday, like, same thing, bro. How long is an hour? Less. You can leave whenever you want, bro. Okay, but yeah, it, it lasts like an hour, two hours. All right, all right. Get up in there, bro. Tomorrow, uh, do I, do I, would I scan this? Yeah, you can scan this. Yep, that'd be the Zoom Bible study. You can scan that and get in at 8 p.m. Um, or you can just type in the PM ID or the password if that doesn't work. Okay. You see all what I'm right. trying to say? Super easy and simple, bro. 
And um, the thing is this, man. God has a plan for your life, bro. It's up to you to answer it. Yeah, you're right. Because you got to answer this call, bro. It's a call well, on you, bro. It's a call on you. It's a call on you. And I, I don't know why, but I'm just hearing the Lord saying, like, like you, you've always feel like you've been overlooked in your life. A lot of being, you've been overlooked a lot. And I hear the Lord saying, like, viral. I kept hearing the word viral. And I feel like yeah, the Lord's yeah. going to take you, wow. and he's going to expand you, bro. It'd be like wings, bro. Like, he's hiding you like a cocoon, bro. You're going to break out. Butterfly style, bro, and start and start just be unraveling, bro. Let's go. And I see you, I see you even going viral, bro. I see God doing something so mighty in your life that gonna there's gonna be something lives. you do with the gospel, bro, that's going to make things explode. I see that in you too, man. Wow. I swear. Wow. No way. I see that in you too. Really? Yeah. You, you definitely can can y'all 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 together. Y'all together. Y'all do this he all the time together. I, I evangelize. He yeah, he's with me. Yeah, he's with okay. me. Yeah, yeah. Y'all gonna prosper for sure. Amen, Amen. bro. Prosper for sure, man. Amen. Amen. I Amen. appreciate you. Man. Hey, I bless you again, my brother. I bless you again. Thank you, man. Yeah, no problem. Make sure you know Jesus died and rose again. Most definitely. I'm gonna like, believe it or not. But it up. We get like 20 to 40 people up in there, bro. 20 to 40 people. So you'll be. Okay. I'll see you in there, bro. Bet it up. Peace. Yep. It's for you today, right here, my friend. It's a gospel track for the Lord. Oh, okay. You know Jesus, man? Oh, yes, indeed. Awesome, man. Awesome. What happened to him? a little dirty. Yeah. Here, I got you another one. I hand these out everywhere, bro. There you go. Take that one. Oh, that's cool, bro. Got my Zoom Bible study on it. YouTube channel, bro. What's your name? My name's Johnny. Johnny? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like John. Yeah. Like John. Yeah. You know the Apostle John? Like John the Revelator? Yeah. John the Baptist. Oh, uh, yeah. You have John the Baptist, too. Jesus' cousin, for sure. Yeah. But uh, I'm talking about John the Revelator, the Apostle John, bro. Like, he was the most intimate disciple with Jesus. He was the only apostle to not be martyred for his faith. You know? And I want you to know, man, that, like, uh, John was also the only dude to go to Jesus with... Like, he didn't go on the cross, but he was with Jesus when he was hanging on the cross. And Jesus looked at him, and he said, take care of my mother. Before he died, bro, and, and rose again. I never know what he said, take care of my mother. Yeah, bro. So uh, the way I tell you that, though, is, man, is that John went with Jesus till the end. It says, those who endure to the end shall be saved. You know, a lot of people who claim Jesus with their mouth, bro, but they don't know him in action, right? Right, right, right. But uh, that's the thing, man. We're called to repentance. We're called to know him, you know? And I feel like you, man, like, it's God's... You to know Jesus, but you got to know God, too. Yeah, Jesus is God in the flesh. You're the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Father, Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Father became flesh. That's Jesus. He's the physical image of the invisible God. When Jesus was on the cross, didn't he ask God, is there any other way? You're speaking in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying and he said, Lord, take this away from me, if this be your will, the cup of wrath. But the reason he did that was because he, be remember, he came. Yes, the Lord. And he, his father, Father God. Mm-hmm. Right, God. Right. Jesus is the son of God. He's not God. He is, man. I'm telling you. That's why in uh, John 8, 58, he said, Before Abraham was, I am. The only other time that... He was a perfect man. You yeah. Know, he's not God. He you is, man. I'm saying? I can show you where he's God. That's why... Uh, it, did you know eight times in the book of Matthew, well, people fell down and... To? to the Father. But he, because he humbled so himself. Father who? Father who? Yeah, God. Okay. If he and God, God is spirit. God, and he God. Right. But, but, but listen so to this. who do we pray to? We pray to the Father God. We pray to the Father, but through Jesus. Okay, but we pray to God. Yeah, we're praying to God the Father through Jesus. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Through him, but you pray. That's just like if you pray to my mother. Yeah. Through me. I'm not my mother. Yeah, you I hear you. What I'm saying. I hear you. So check this out. So um, oh, in. I'm sorry. Are no, you good, man? Oh, no, you're good. Him, He's bro. actually with me. Oh. So check this out, though. Before you leave, in the Book of Genesis, it actually uh, when Adam and Eve fell, um, they were still in the Garden of Eden, and God literally said, He said. Do not let them eat from the tree of life. Kick them out of the garden before they become like one of us. So, even in the beginning, God had considered himself as an us. Even if you read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, right. you ever heard of the, the, the Shema prayer? We are an image of God. He made us an image of him, right? Yeah. yeah, we're the likeness and image of who he is, right. But what are you trying to say? Like God, No, God was speaking, and he was saying, kick Adam and Eve out of the garden before they eat 
of the tree of life and become like one of us. We read the Bible, we got to put it together too, though. You know what I'm saying? You can read this, but you can tell you, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying, you know. Yeah, I have perspectives. Like, I right. to see it. Right. So you got to use that, that spiritual eye. Yeah, a thousand percent. Right. But how do you get but spiritual I eyes? I understand what you're saying. You know. What you think, though? So you don't believe Jesus is God? Or you just question? No, I believe he's the son of God. Yeah, he is. He's, he's, a, he's the son of God, but he's also, he. it's God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three are one. The triune God, he is, he is one though. One God, three persons. And here's the thing too as well, is that Jesus... So the express image of God. Right, and Jesus also but was worshipped... Right? Yeah. One able to see planet in the put it in there. Right. Oh, the angel verse. Right. Yeah. And that's, it, as it came out, it came out as Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, God. What you mean? What? What do you mean by yeah, God? What? Go ahead. Okay, God. Who, who do you think did that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was God. Who do you think sent him here? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right, but that's nothing for God to put his spirit inside of somebody and it unravel as his son. It's still his seed. It's him. It's deep, bro. It's the perfect image and likeness of himself. That's why Jesus is the physical revelation of God who is spirit. He's God in the flesh. To become like you, to die for you, bro, and rise again on the third day by the power of God. You see what I'm trying to say? You gotta believe that, though. He loved you, man. He loved you and died for you. You gotta make sure you repent, though. God bless you. Hey, man, I feel like to give this to you today, right here. It's a gospel track for the Lord. I'm actually gonna give you another one. You take that? I'm gonna give you this one, bro. It's a little bit beat up, but all right. it's all right. Just check it out, man. What's your name? Tony. Tony? Yeah. I'm Caleb, bro. Do you know Jesus, man? I've never met him personally, no. <laughs> I hear no, that. No, I mean, I, of course I know him, yeah. You know him in spirit, though? Um, I, I, know, I know there's a power out there, a higher yeah. power, definitely. But, yeah. I, I mean, it's so much going on, I can't, just, can't tell you who's almighty or who's the messenger or, you know. Oh, are you, uh, do you believe in uh, being a Muslim? I really don't have, I believe in higher power. Higher power? I, uh, I see. higher power. I see. Yeah. Well, check this out, man. I'm actually just a Christian. I believe in Jesus. Uh -huh. I believe that God came in the flesh, man, to come and die for you, bro, and rise again um, to be able God to forgive you of your sin. Man. God bless you. Sir, thank you bro. I don't even know who that guy is, but um, <laughs> Mr. Sermon talking about Jesus, maybe. But um, the point being is, man, is that God came down to become like you. There's no other religion, no even power that came down. Remember, there's somebody who created power. Right. And that's God. It's always a creator. Right. There's always a creator. Yeah. But, the, but the, the factor is, and who is the creator, right? And how do we get to know him? And obviously we see throughout the whole Bible since the beginning of history that God had made a way for him to be able to indwell with man. Uh -huh. But God even made a greater way of not just being able to indwell with man, but in man. Mm -hmm. Through his son, Jesus Christ, that when you believe that he came in the flesh, died for you, and rose again on uh -huh. the third day by the power of God, and that he can forgive you of your sin by his blood that was shed for you. Because the wage of your sin is death, right? Yeah. If you if you commit murder and you were to go to court, what would happen, right? You'd be condemned yes. for life. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing with us as human beings. We've all sinned against God, bro, all of us, right? Yeah. We've all made big mistakes. Whether it's, it was in secret, whether it was open, either way, we're going to receive judgment from God. Uh -huh. And the thing is this, is that even if you repent and you don't do it again, your good deeds will never outweigh your bad because even your good deeds can be done in a bad motive. And every man is convicted before the law as transgressors. And every man has fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So what I'm letting you know, bro, is that when you go before God, you're going to be naked before him, which means this. You're going to be very vulnerable and exposed. Uh -huh. And there's going to be nothing that's hidden that will not be revealed. There's going to be nothing that was said in dark. Every word you said will be taken exactly into account. That's, that's scary. It. Yeah. Yeah, and it was scary for me. But Jesus actually appeared to me and changed my whole life. I seen him as God in the flesh, and he was judging me, and I was going to hell. And when I woke up, I was sleeping next to my girlfriend. I looked at her and I was like, Jesus just appeared to me. Uh -huh. And she was like, like, it's just, just a vision or a dream or whatever. Like, okay. But I, it changed me so much, bro, that I literally moved out of her house. And I went to live in with my Muslim father. And I started really pursuing Jesus and getting to know him, hearing his voice and walking with him. And see, God had to come in the flesh. So that way, not you, you could just have a relationship with him, but also that he could come in and dwell you, bro. Because your body's a temple. 
So, so when you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit now comes and enters you. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead comes and indwells you. And that's the good news of Jesus, man. Like all these other religions, they say, you have to do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that to go to heaven. It's almost confusing. It's like, okay, so when's the, when do you draw the line? Where's your security at? Even Islam. Because I have a family that's Islamic, right? So it ain't about how many good deeds you do. Because in the Bible it says, all our good deeds are as filthy rags before God. It's about knowing Jesus, knowing the person of God. Do you notice how it takes your focus fully off of doing and it takes your focus on knowing him? Mm -hmm. And that's the key is knowing Jesus, God in the flesh, through the spirit that he puts in you. And now you can come into covenant relationship with God mm -hmm. and you can live and walk with him all the days of your life and he'll speak to you and reveal himself to you. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, man. And I feel like with you, I feel like even God as a father, I feel like that's a stretch for you because you had problems with the father in your own life. Right. And I see the Lord saying that he wants to, this is going to be the first revelation that he shows you is the shepherd of who he is. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want? Yeah. He maketh me lie down in green pastures, leadeth me upon still waters. Uh -huh. And I feel like, was there someone in your life that used to tell you this psalm? Well, my mom's very religious. Very religious, yeah. And I feel like someone in your life, like I, don't, I feel like that scripture right there means something to you. I don't know why. But I feel like the Lord just wants to show you that he has you, bro. That everyone that he's put in his hand, no one can pluck out. Mm -hmm. Jesus is God in the flesh, bro. Like, the God man. Christ yeah, Jesus. Crazy. I, I definitely feel like somebody got me because it's been things I like endured and overcame. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, man. I can see it, bro. Yeah. I can see it, man. And uh, the reason I tell you that, though, man, is because, like, I care for you, bro. I care, I care for, obviously, everybody, but there's specific people the Lord highlights. Mm -hmm. Go to him. Go to him. Go to him. Go to her. And the point being is, is that God is giving you an invitation, literally. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, come and follow me, right? I'm not Jehovah Witness. I'm not Mormon. I'm not none of that, bro. I just believe in Jesus. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. No religion, bro. Just relationship with God. Uh-huh. You know? So... Have you ever accepted Jesus into your heart, bro? No? I mean, um, it, when I was, like, younger, yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't, like, an sincere? official exception. No, it was sincere, but it wasn't, like, it was, like, somewhat, like, I was solo, I was sleeping at night, or, and I just woke and was just, like, I accept you as my Savior. Yeah. You protect me through the realms of, you know, man, and spirit and all of the, you know but um I, as i grow older and i read more and become more earthly i guess i became more i guess earthly <laughs> so yeah uh, I, I look at it and i don't i don't i see a higher power but i i, I know it's a higher power uh, whether it's jesus god coming as jesus i just uh i just know it's there somewhere because i can feel it in the spirit oh yeah for sure bro for sure and that's the thing like Referring to him as a higher power is basically saying this, he has no person. I'm saying he's a power. Yeah. But the reality is, is God has a person. As a matter of fact, bro, you were made in the likeness and image of who he was. Mm -hmm. Humans are beautiful creatures, although they're very sinful and evil in the same sense. Yeah. Because of what they did, yeah. of the, the choice they made. Mm -hmm. God gave them the free will decision. That's how much yeah. he loved you, bro. Like, hey, you can, do what, you can do what you want. That's on you. But you have the option. Choose life or death today. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is, man. If we don't choose Jesus, in the end, we end up in hell. We end up in the lake of fire. We, Jesus didn't do that. He did everything he could to make sure you don't end up there. Right. But when we just continue to keep on sinning and doing what we're doing, and obviously if we don't worship the creator and know him, there should be consequences. Right. Just like this, if you were to go murder somebody or do this and do that, not that you ever would, I'm just saying, for example, there should be consequences. Yeah. Because that where we live a very uncivilized society and we probably wouldn't be able to go to the store like this and things would be very bad. Yeah. So... God designed it and had a moral code written on your heart so that way you could have a conscience and you could know between good and evil. You oh, could yeah, know. I definitely know between good and evil. Yeah, so you I, can sense it. I'm not consciously stupid, I tell you that. Yeah, when we make mistakes, for yeah, sure, we bro. We definitely make mistakes. We do, man. We no, do. Not perfect. Every man stumbles, for sure. And uh, I want you to know that he can give you a new identity, bro. I feel like uh, identity is something for you because there's been a confusion on your identity. There's been a confusion on who you are and some things that you've been battling that mm -hmm. I feel like. Like, you, you, you don't know why you struggle with certain things. Mm -hmm. And you're like, man, you know, I feel like you wanted to be this way, but you were actually this way. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. And I sense. feel like God wants to give you identity, bro. He wants to give you purpose. And he wants to reveal to you who you are, man. But you only find out who he is 
I'm sorry, you only find out who you are when you find out who he is. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? And I know it's a deep question for you, man. You may got to answer this. Um, uh -huh. Was there something that happened to you when you were young, man? You catch what I'm saying? You catch the drift of what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of things. Yeah, you catch yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I feel like something happened to you, man, when you were really young, bro, that really, like, shifted a lot of things for you and, 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 and did something to your life, big mm -hmm. time. And I feel like the Lord is saying he wants to heal you from that, man. And I feel like your innocence and vulnerability was taken. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like he wants to restore that to you, man. Your innocence and vulnerability. And I feel like it gave you trust issues. You have a lot of mis like mistrust. Like, you know, there's a, there's a lack of trust there. Even though you're outgoing and you open yourself up to people, there's still a wall there. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's still a wall there. That's just a defense. That's just how you are. It's who you right. are. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I feel like you're a pretty straightforward guy. Yeah, I am straightforward. I yeah. It's hard for me to lie and all that type of stuff. Yeah, man. Like, you... you Morally, you're probably a good person, you know what I'm saying? But before God, we're all wicked, you, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, in my eyes, you might be a good dude, you know what I'm saying? But in God's eyes, we're all wicked, messed up, super sinful. And none of us could do it on our own. And God, knowing this, in his wisdom, sent his son for you, bro. Mm -hmm. Have you ever accepted Jesus? Like, have you ever said, Jesus, I believe in, I believe in you, I want to know you, reveal yourself to me? Have you ever said that with your mouth, bro? He's humble, man, he's gentle. Like, to get to know God, sorry, you have to be humble. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that he's humble. Right. The devil, he's gonna, he's gonna see that window barely open. He's slipping that boy in, and he's, he's coming in your house, I mean, bro. He's out here. He, he's, he's a vulture. He's out here looking oh, for yeah. the ones. For sure. Yeah. And uh, that's what I'm trying to say, though, is Jesus, though, is, is the complete opposite, bro. Like he's so gentle and lowly, bro. Like, I know because I've seen him. And number two, also in the Bible, it says he's humble and lowly and gentle, and he wants to teach you all things, but he'll never force himself on you. Uh -huh. Matter of fact, he'll, he'll, he lets people live their whole life without ever speaking to him. Think about. How crazy that is for a creator to even let people do that. Right. And he says, you know, you could live apart from me, that's cool. You're gonna find out the consequences though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's on you. Kind of like your kid, right? Your kid starts acting out, you're like, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and learn for yourself. Go touch the stove. Uh -huh. See what happens. You're gonna get right. burned. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Do you wanna accept Jesus into your heart, man, and get to know him and him reveal himself to you and speak to you? You asked me this question? Yeah. Um you don't have to, but I'm asking you because, number one, I care for you, man. Number two, if you don't confess Jesus as, as Lord and believe with your heart that he is God and he is king and he's coming back again, there is a place called hell in the lake of fire. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And it's for those who are unbelieving, those who are fearful, those who are cowardly, those who are fornicators, adulterers, this, 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 and that, and all these other different people that they, they identify with that sin and they yeah. are living in the pride of life. Yeah, but if, if I don't, like, if I don't fornicate, like, at heart, I didn't tell people, I don't like to brag about my heart, but people told me I was a good person at heart. I would give my last to anybody who asked for it if they needed yeah. more than me. I, I don't fornicate. I don't, um, I don't go out and try to be, like, I guess evil and mischief. But if, uh, if, if he was to come back with me not believing him, but me believing righteousness or me believing what's good and what's what's like me knowing consciously yeah what's wrong what's right and i always try to do what's right well he still cast me because i don't i didn't believe him because i never met him like or i have a, i guess like a reason to meet him or like if, like if he already know i'm a good person at heart and he don't have to come to me yeah that's a good question man and it's a tough question because you know what uh -huh. There's 4,000 different religions in the world. Yeah. And the reality what, is there's only one that's right. There's only one that's right. And that's the hard part. And I understand your question, but in the same sense, I have to tell you, as my conscience being clean before God, and who I've seen, and in an eyewitness, uh -huh. that which I heard, that which I've seen, and that which I've handled myself, and I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is God, and he literally came, and he really did die on a tree, and he really did rise again. And I'm a witness to all men around me. And that's what I'm even here. I don't, I don't get paid to do this, bro. I'm, I'm here just preaching to you, talking to you, different things like that, because I truly believe he's coming back. And I'm letting you know that every man that does not believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, their condemnation is just, and they will spend eternity in the lake of fire apart from him. Because if you don't receive the son, you don't receive the father. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it, is that it's only through Jesus that you can have a relationship with the father. Uh -huh. But like, this is also the thing too, is there's nothing you can do to earn it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do. What's, I, I, I just got common sense. I know what's right and what's yeah. wrong. So, like, think about it. When I say, okay, there's a lot of people who can say, I did a lot of right things. Mm -hmm. But that's like a murderer coming before the judge and them saying, 
But your honor, I gave to the homeless. I did charity. I did all these things. Right. That's, I mean. And honor saying, well, bro, I mean, you murdered somebody. Like, it doesn't, I know you did all these good things and that's good. But this murder is weighing heavy. It don't outweigh. It don't outweigh. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, before God, bro, like, we've all murdered in our hearts. Right. said, if you've hated with your heart, you've murdered. He says, if you've ever lusted with your eyes, you've committed adultery, Mm -hmm. which are graven sins, man. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, they really are. Even if you aren't a Christian or this or that. Right. It's still a deep sin. You see what I'm trying to say? Like, murder's yeah. really bad. Like, we just know that as human beings. Like, don't yeah. murder. Like, of course not, you know? But the only reason we know that is because of God when the law came down through Moses. Mm-hmm. That's what gave us moral codes so that way we could know what was right and what's what's wrong. Mm-hmm. But your moral code's written even inside of you, which is even crazier, right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, come natural, out of heart. Exactly. You, you, you got the devil in you if you don't see it. Yep. yep. Like, if you were to pick this up and say, ah, oh, I'm going to take this, you would feel convicted. Yeah. Even if you're not a Christian. Yeah, that's the first thought. It's going to be like, I shouldn't take it. You shouldn't take it. I got to, you know, pay for it. Somebody earned and packaged and yes. delivered and somebody's invested in this company. And it's a lot of things that came in line that was right. Yep. But I'm not going to take what's right and do what's wrong. Exactly. Yep. And God knows that you, your heart is good. That's probably why he's reaching out to you. And he's saying, hey, what's your name again? Tony. Tony. He's saying, Tony, I see your heart. I know you're trying to be good. I know you want to do these things. I see your heart is pure. Mm-hmm. But the thing is this, is that God, God wants to know you. Mm-hmm. It isn't just about your works. He wants to know you, brother. So yeah, you can't enter the kingdom of God with trying to do good works, but you can enter the kingdom of God by believing in the person of Jesus and knowing the Father through Jesus. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the physical image of the invisible God. He's the revela- perfect revelation of the Father. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Because the Father's invisible. Right. He, he can't be seen, bro. He's literally... He lingers. Yeah, he's just he everywhere. Us. Yeah. Like, you can't... Like he's on the throne in heaven, but in the same sense, heaven can't contain him. Heaven is his throne, and the earth is his footstool, the Psalms say. So, it ain't about, like, religion. Religion is having to do to get to, get to heaven. Mm-hmm. But relationship... Humans were created for relationship. That's the right. best way to tell you it. That's true. You were created for relationship, bro. Yeah. You... Without relationship, you become numb, you become hard, you become calloused. When you have a relationship, though, you start to experience love. Mm-hmm. You start to experience such fruitfulness. You get to have babies and all these good things, yeah. right? It's such wonderful. Everything is good. So the devil hates relationship. So now he gets you to try to work to try to get to heaven rather than having a relationship with God. Mm-hmm. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to reveal the Father to you and be able to come like you so you can have a relationship. Because it's hard for you as a human being to have a relationship with someone that's invisible. <laughs> yeah. So he came and as a son, and he and said, I, "Listen, I, I believe in. I, I mean, I believe in things that's invisible too. I mean, everything got its form, it does. shape. Right. So I like water can take different forms. Water can take vapor. Water can take a solid. Water can take a liquid. For I sure. I believe different forms. For so sure. They, they definitely exist. The human form can take mm-hmm. all types of forms. I believe in forms. Oh yeah, a thousand percent. And I think too, even with uh, yeah, there's definitely the it says the unseen in the Bible is more real than the seen. Mm-hmm. Bible isn't against that. Bible actually endorses I the fact. That's funny about that, bro. He didn't show me that I'm seeing more real than the seen. Mm-hmm. It's very strong. Keep going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, you know, the thing is this: God wants to speak to you, man. You know, He wants to reveal Himself to you, but it's only when you humble yourself and you say, "Okay." You know, none of us know it all. None of us are. We're all like a grain of sand, right? And saying, okay, God, show me who you are. Reveal your person to me. Mm-hmm. If this guy is telling the truth, show me. Right. That doesn't mean he has to appear to you, but he'll show you if you catch what I'm saying. You know how what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. There'll be so many signs around you, you'd be like, wow, okay, yeah. no, this is kind of crazy. Uh, yeah, I, heard, I mean, I definitely heard it before, so. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm pretty familiar with it. Yeah, and God reveals himself in power as well. Because there's 4,000 different religions, but there's very few who say that, okay, the kingdom of God is not talk, but demonstration of power and spirit. Mm-hmm. So, in the Bible... It actually says, don't don't show them by your words, show them by your action, right? Not just by the fruits of Christianity, by like patience, love, and all them good things, which will definitely reveal the reveal yeah, Christ. Yeah, but also the power of casting out demons, healing the sick, prophecies, things like this. Mm-hmm. I see it everywhere I go, bro. I see demons get casted out, sick healed, all different types of crazy things I can show you and even tell you about. And even it's on the Zoom Bible study uh-huh. and on my YouTube channel. You can actually even go see it. Um, I, I have a YouTube account and I have a Zoom Bible study right here. You can literally scan the QR code, bro. And I actually, uh, okay. do YouTube, I do like a lot of teachings and stuff like that to disciple people, things like this. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I pray, man, that you can, uh, if you feel led to join, you can do that. But also ask God to show you, bro. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to ask God for a sign, but say, 
Reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. Oh, I definitely asked him for it. You have? For it, yeah. And what if he's sending me here right now to talk to you? And saying, okay. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah. This is the next step to you getting to know him. Like, you got to ask Jesus. Like, not just God, like Jesus. Mm -hmm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Not three gods, one God, three persons. Mm -hmm. Which is a mystery. And that even humbles the human mind. Yeah. Because, um... How could God be three? Yeah. Right? But think about it. How are you a spirit, soul, and body? You were made in the likeness and image of God, right? Uh-huh. You were made after God's image and likeness. And that's why you're a spirit, soul, and body. You're a triune being in one person. Mm -hmm. There's one Tony, but your flesh is definitely different from your spirit. Definitely. You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So the mystery is there. It's just a matter of understanding it and, and getting to know it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't want to keep preaching at you all day, man. I, I respect you a lot, brother, and I just... Um, I'd love to come on and talk to you today, man. All right, thanks. And I'm going to leave you with that, bro. And I believe that on your own time, man, if you ever say, Jesus, I want to know you. Save me. Uh -huh. He will do just that. Okay. Not by any works, but by believing that he yeah. died and rose again for you, bro. All right. And it's the most historic book in the whole... The Gospels are the most historic books in the whole world, man. I definitely believe in that. Yeah. It's true, man. And I know a lot of people come against the Bible and they say it's been... Especially Muslims, right? They'll come, they attack the Bible hard saying yeah. it's been mistranslated and all yeah. these different things and it's been changed. It's been so long and yeah. history got its way. And, yeah. But we can call Oxford University right now and say, hey, take that Bible out. It's a myth. Uh -huh. And they'll say, ah, we can't do that. This is history. Yeah. This has to be, this has to be in our museums. This has to be in, 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 our, in our place of teaching. You right. know why? Because it has a 99.9% .9 accuracy rate with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Mm -hmm. The Gospels are so proven that there's more proof for the Gospels than there is for Abraham Lincoln living. So it's like, how many witnesses? There were four different witnesses and even more that were written in the Bible of the resurrection of Christ. That's a lot of men, yeah. Jewish men who feared God and also died for their faith, mm -hmm. crucified upside down, sawed in a half, stabbed with a sword, dipped in oil. For them to all lie and say they've seen Jesus from the... Why would they die? Yet even all take a witness and deceive all these people. Mm -hmm for such a thing that's like almost unrealistic. Right. Resurrecting from the dead. It's pretty crazy if you think about it. Yeah. What's the chances of that, bro? They all testified and said he it's really not. did rise from the dead and then died for it. Yeah. They all died for it, every single one, other than John, who was dipped in oil and tortured and then wrote the book of Revelation on the island of Patmos. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot to it, man. Just check it out, read it, read the, read the gospels, read through the track, you know what I'm saying? Just all learn right. about it and be open. Okay. God will speak to you through dreams, visions. Definitely. I believe in that. You see what I'm saying? Visions and dreams. Oh, yeah, bro. He speaks spirit to spirit. I'm not one of them guys that says, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, just real religious on you, bro. No, man. He'll speak to you, bro. And whatever channel that is, just be open. Be listening. Oh, yeah. Be ready. Be looking. You know what I'm saying? Because he's humble. If you miss him, that's on you. Bless you, brother. Thank you have a good you, day, man. okay? Bless you, too. Yep. Have a good day. You as well. You as well. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, it's for you today right here, brother. I got a check for you, man. The Romans Road, man. It's it's for Jesus, bro. Oh, okay. For Jesus. He died for you, rose again, man. If you believe in him, you can have everlasting life. All right. It's called all cool, repentance. I appreciate it. You don't believe in Jesus? I do. I believe in God. You believe in God? You yeah. believe in Jesus, though? Yeah, but I don't need all that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here for that. I'm coming to buy some pillows. But I appreciate your effort and your... Oh, I hear you, man. No, we, but we got a YouTube channel and Zoom Bible study, too, bro. Check yeah, it out. I don't want to check it out. I'm a Jehovah Witness. You're a Jehovah Witness? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Jesus is God, man. Make sure you're repenting your sin. God bless you. It's for you today, sir. I'm gonna give you this. For you, man. It's a gospel track for the Lord, man. All right, thank you. You believe in Jesus? Yes. Awesome, Sir. awesome. And do you believe that He is uh, coming back for you? Yeah, of course. You believe you believe that we need to repent of sin and and know Him in spirit and truth? Right. That's good. You believe He died for you and rose again? Yes. You have a relationship with God? Yes. Okay. Okay. All the time. Amen. That's good, God man. Good all the time, all the time. God is good. Amen. Yes, man. I mean, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. All right. All right. Get to know him, brother. Get to know him. Hey, it's for you today, my brother. It's a gospel track for the Lord, man. I just want you to know uh, he died for you, rose again, man. You believe in him, you can have everlasting life. You feel me? I bless you, my friend, okay? Likewise. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to give this to you today, man. Oh, you looked a lot older when I first seen you. You look young, though. Oh, I appreciate it, man. Hey, man, uh, ask you a question, man. Do you know Jesus? Um, no. Kinda? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. What about you? Do you know Jesus? Oh, yeah, I do. That's good, that's good. I want you to know, uh, are you guys like uh, married or something? Engaged. Engaged? Wow, that's awesome, that's awesome. I'm glad they're happy for you guys. Thank you. Um, so I want you guys to know, man, that uh, just like how you guys are engaged and 
want to be, you know, married. You know, it's the same thing with Christ, you know? Like, we get, we marry Him. We come into covenant with Him to the Father. That's why He said, go and invite everybody to the, to the wedding feast, you know? And that's what I'm inviting you to today, bro. I want to invite you to the wedding feast, the supper of the Lamb. You know, when we get caught up in the air, when we get caught up with the Lord, you know? It's, it's because we're, it's because we're in covenant with Him. Think about it, bro. If, oh, if a husband and wife, they cheat on each other, right? Like, what happens, you know? The relationship gets broken up. Like, not even in the Bible, you have legal right to divorce that person, right? Because they committed adultery on you. So, it's the same thing with God, man. Like, when we, when we sin and against Him and we do all these things, we just say, God, I don't... We all stumble, but it's a different to practice it. And willfully just keep on being like, nah, I'm, I'm good, God. Nah, I'm good. We come out of covenant with Him. You see what I'm trying to say? We come out of relationship with Him, bro. He loves you so much, bro pursuing you literally look at this guy crazy guy at Meyer, jesus freak trying to tell you about jesus who used to be a drug dealer used to be hustling woman all, everything you could think of parties and now here i am talking to you about jesus bro and i'm telling you man that he died and he rose again that you could have eternal life when you believe in him if you're willing to repent and you can receive the forgiveness of your sin have you accepted jesus into your heart man yes sir you have I go to church every sunday with my mom really Oh wow, so your mom be preaching to you, huh? Yep. Wow. You, yeah, every day. you feel like it got shoved down your throat a little bit when you were younger? No. Nah, that's just something that comes with you, you know? Huh? Like, it's just something that comes with you. Makes her happy, makes me even happy. Yeah. You struggle with a lot of depression, bro? Used to. You used to? Yeah, man. I want you to know, man, there's uh there's hope, man. You know what I'm trying to say? And it says God will replace the spirit of heaviness with the garment of praise. You know? And I feel like uh I feel like you be going through it sometimes internally. And I feel like uh, I see her asking you, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And I see the Lord saying that, that He's going to heal you, man. He's going to heal you. He's going to restore you. And I feel like uh, there's some emotional wounds from when you were real young, man. Real young. And God wants to raise you up, man, to be able to, be a, uh, uh, to, be able to do things for His kingdom and for you to walk with Him all the red days of your life. You see what I'm trying to say? Most yeah. definitely. I guess you did. You feel me? All right, man. I love you, man. I bless you, my friend. I'm going to give you the to the Lord, man. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bro. I'm awesome. Bro, hey man, this ain't no like uh Jehovah's Witness, man. I'm just a Christian out here preaching the gospel, bro. No, I know, no, no. Respect this shit, I'm okay. Thank you. Sure. Do you believe in Jesus though? Yes. And he's the son of God coming back. I was there in the bro? higher power. Hey. The po the, ain't no power that's going to come down and save you, though, bro. You know what I'm trying to say? Jesus, he came in the flesh. God in the flesh came and died for you, bro. Rose again. So you got to be eternal life. You feel me? To give us grace. I know it. Give us, give you grace, right? But that doesn't give a license to do whatever we want either. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't, I don't disagree with that. You know what I mean? We got to repent. We got to know him, bro. And it's like this. Like, do you, do, you, do you know that power, you know? But there's somebody who created power, bro. And he's a person. Yeah. When you say power, it makes it sound like it's over here. Right. But when you say God and get, give a name to him. It's Jesus relation. In the flesh. Yeah, bro. It's relationship. You feel me? Like right now, right now, bro, is how most people know God. Like how I know you right now. I barely know you, bro. Mm -hmm. Hey, God. Bye, God. I'll see you later. Yo, hey. But do you know God personally and intimately, bro? Like that's what I'm really asking you, bro. Forget the track. Like, do you know Jesus? Yeah, straight up. Do I know? Yes. Yes. But I you do. believe in him. I have a belief in a higher power. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's hard for me to grasp okay. that because of the non-physical touching aspect of it. But do I believe in a higher power? Yes. But well, we can tell you that Jesus can encounter you right now by his Holy can Spirit. Do what? Jesus can encounter you right now by his Holy Spirit. He can. He's an experiential man. He's an experiential God. That's why he's a gentleman. He knocks in the heart. You gotta accept him into your heart. He will come inside of me. He will. Like my father was oh, sorry, guys. Here. Like I grew up in the church and everything. Like I just I have different, you know, different opinions about it. That's all. I believe in God or a God. I just... You believe know. in heaven? That's a hard one too, man. It's hard because at some point, yes, I did. But at this point, it's like, I believe there is something else out there. Yep. I don't have that answer. So, to Wait, say it's heaven, pulled? could be. Okay. To say it's hell, could be. I'm not, you know, discrediting either one. I'm just yeah. saying that I believe there's an afterlife. That. Right. I think it's a little life wings that kind of pulls you away a little bit from the faith. Uh, not really. It's just I think more so the money aspect of church. That's what pulls you. Yeah. Right. Because it's like that's someone's job to have a church. You know what I'm saying? And it, they have to bring money into the church. Is I, this my job right now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know you well enough to say that. It could be. 
No. But someone had to pull you into this, right? No. Someone had to at some point. Well, there's a church, right? No. There's no church? Well, there's a, I go to a church now, a church, right? but I, Jesus appeared to me in the middle of the night while I was sleeping in my girlfriend's bed, bro. But why do you choose to go to church? I go to church because I go fellowship with other believers. But you could do that anywhere, right? Yeah, that's right. And on the track that you rejected, there's a Zoom Bible study that you could come and you could come and receive and receive uh, impartation, receive revelation, receive teachings, receive all different types of teachings I have over heaven, over hell, over things. Because I've seen Jesus, but I've also seen Sheol. I haven't seen heaven, but I've seen hell. What teachings? What book is that from? Where are the teachings based off of? The teachings are based off of, obviously, the Bible, but also just through revelation of the Spirit. Like, Jesus was the living Word, bro. Like, He was the Word made flesh. So, like, yeah, He talks about the Torah, but He's like, you guys are searching this Word and you're looking for life, but it's in me you're going to find it. Amen. It's in relationship. So, it's like, when you get to know Jesus, you get to know all them things as well. Because in Him, all things consist, bro. So, He reveals them things to you when you can receive it. But see, you're at a place right now where you don't need a revelation of heaven or hell. You, you need a revelation of Christ himself and how he's God in the flesh. And he loved you so much, bro, that God came down from the, from the throne, bro, and said, I'm going to come and die for you, even yeah. though you were, you were an enemy to him, bro. Yeah. I was an enemy. He was an enemy. We've all sinned against God. Yeah. And I, I know we can all agree on one thing is that we all have a conscience. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Like, even since you were young, if you were to go grab this, even when you were young, you, something in you told you, I ah, don't do that. Don't do that. And then you did it and you felt grieved. You see what I'm trying to say? I'm not saying you did it yourself, oh, yeah. I but... I mean, it's just it's morals and values, things like that. I get it, but... Is the teachings going to make me, you know, live a different life? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's all according to your faith. But I'm saying that values is different from morals. You have morals because God gave you a moral code inside of you. And we see that, and we, how do we know this is the truth? Because when Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, we know that this moral code that was written on tablets of stone lined up with the moral code that's written inside of you. Thou shalt not murder. You know not to murder because it's inside of you as well. It was written on you in your moral code because you were, you were made after the image and likeness of God himself. You have an identity, bro. So that's how you can know God is when you start to see that you were made in the image and likeness of who he was. And that's why God came in the flesh to become like you and me to fulfill that moral written code that we could never fulfill. We broke it. Therefore, we, we were dead in our spirit. We were dead in our trespasses, the relationship with God. God can't, God can't be somewhere that's sinful. You feel me? Right. So we had to come, and he, had, he who knew no sin became sin Amen. so we could become the righteousness of God. He took on that punishment you deserve, bro. So it's like, yeah, I get it. You can say higher power and all these different things, but the reality is, bro, it's deeper than a higher power, bro. It's his person. It's God, man. But God has a name. Like you gotta, you can't just say higher power. It's like that's like basically saying like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, what's your name? Jaren. Jaren. That's J that's Jaren over there. Like I don't know. That's some that's some dude. Mm -hmm. That's some dude. No, like Jaren, you have a name, Jaren. Right. That may be disrespecting you. Yeah, I, yeah, whatever. Forget that guy. No, like you're Jaren. I, I, like it's cool to get to know you, Jaren. Like you seem like a nice guy. You seem like you are intelligent. You seem like you you have a you know you have a personality. Yeah. Same thing with God. He has a personality. He has a person and. And he wants to get to know you, is all we're trying to say, bro. And we were just giving you the track so you could just read about it. This actually, this track really ain't that good anyway, so I don't mind. But it really has a Zoom Bible study and the YouTube channel on it. Mm -hmm. You know what but I'm saying? I'm still good, man. Thank you, though. Sure. I appreciate all no you guys have explained, and I've taken yeah. it in, but... All right, man. It's only you to make the choice, bro. Thank you. All right, you got free will, man. Yep. yep. Make blood. sure you know him, though, because hell is real. Like, a fire is real. And if you, if you die in your sin, you will go to hell for eternity, and you'll have weeping and gnashing of teeth. Does that make sense? I love you, man. That's why I'm telling you. I appreciate it. I appreciate that you even wanted me to receive that, but I'm okay. Okay. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. Hey, man, this is for you today right here. So, world. Gospel track for the Lord. Just wanted to give you one of these today, man. He died for you and rose again, bro. Uh, if you believe in Jesus, he's, yeah, he's coming back soon, man. He'll give you eternal life, you know what I'm saying? God bless you, my friend. Here you guys take one, too. It's for the Lord, man. It's for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Talks about the, the covenant of the rainbow, you know what I'm trying to say? But it leads to Jesus. Just check out the track. We have a Zoom Bible study and YouTube channel on it too. And Jesus is calling all men to repent of their sins and know him, you know what I'm saying? Continuing our sin will end up in hell fire, bro, like a fire for eternity. But Jesus, he came in the likeness of flesh, just like you and me, you know what I'm saying? So you could repent and have everlasting life, bro. And he died for you. Make sure you know him, bro, okay? You make sure you seem humble. So we gonna go to the fiery pits of hell if we don't know God? Yes. But what it, when he said that the hell is endless and it's black, so is it is it fiery or is it not? There's you have the yeah you have two different types of there's <laughs> hell is not the same place everywhere. There's different dimensions of hell, just like there's dimensions of heaven. 
you have the city of Jerusalem in heaven and then you have the rest of heaven, right? Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm letting you know though, bro, if you, if you continue in your sin, you'll go there. Uh, but you can repent and you can have everlasting life. You feel me? Right. You can repent. What about the sin that you do? You going to hell for your sins? I repented of my sin, brother. Right. I'm I not, ask God for my forgiveness every morning. So how do you know I sin? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 says this. If you continue in willful sin, there no longer remains a sacrifice or atonement for you. So the blood of Jesus is no longer to affect to those who continue in their so willful sin. So what about sin. the willful sin that you do? I don't continue in willful sin. I repent of my hey, sin, so how bro. do you know that I do? <laughs> I don't. Bro, I'm gonna contradict everything you that's said. You. To me. You about to right, that's because you're living in pride, and that's a sin. Nah, not necessarily. I'm just. She's asking, humble. She's I'm, humble. She's humble. You're not. No, I'm just asking the dumbass, dumbass questions. That's right. all. Right. Yeah. 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 And it says, it says this. It says that. No, it's not necessarily. I'm not necessarily being prideful. I'm just asking you. Do you know what the fuck you're talking about? Bro? Yeah, I do. And I'm I just, just told you. you. I just told you. I just told you, bro. You I just told you. Know. Didn't. And I want you to know Jesus loves you, man. Look, he loves you. You're sinning right now. You were born. That's for your flesh is a sin. You're not like nothing you're talking to me is like you know, like right. you're so, sinning, bro. But you were born again, right? If you believe in Jesus? Bro, you were born again, right? You were born again if you believe in Jesus. You was born again if you was baptized, any of that, bro. You're not trying yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, born I'm, know, I'm, I'm, I'm born again of a new nature, right? Bro, so I'm having a new nature. Just, right. because you, bro, just because you go to church every Sunday or just because you do what the fuck you do don't mean that you a better man than me, nigga. Move around. Yeah. Man, take your shit. Okay. I'll gladly take it. I'll give it to somebody who actually wants to go to heaven and wants to know Jesus, man. Right. God bless so you. You might just go burn it because you don't want to go. Yep, Move totally. Around, totally. Yep, God bless you, my friend. Can you bless you, bro, the gospel track for the Lord, man? Huh? Can you, can you bless you, the gospel track for Jesus, bro? Who? Jesus Christ and Nazareth, bro? Go back soon, man. We just got a gospel track, man. Basically, you know, we're trying to say anything you want to read. We got a Zoom Bible saying here that my man teaches right here, bro. You know what I'm saying? From the Holy Spirit, Sorry. Revelation of the Lord. Sorry, brother. Yeah, man, we're just out here preaching the gospel, man. Yep. Bro. Oh, yeah, that's good, bro. Um, yeah, Jesus changed a lot, man. He's really I got, a, I, got a, I got a church I already go to. Oh, for real? That's yeah. cool. Awesome, man. My parents, uh, my parents is actually, they, like, in the church. Like, cool, man. Church, yeah. Cool. Yeah, but you I... go there just to serve? You just go there to receive or what? No, I don't go there like that. Okay. Yeah, I was just about to you say. Know? I was about to say, because I, I feel like the Lord is showing me, man, like, prodigal. Yeah, I'm, I ain't going to lie to you. It's just like... Prodigal. You know what prodigal is? Uh, it's like the you know Jesus talked about leaving the 99 righteous for the one. Yep. And I'm turning to say you're that one, bro. He's coming he's for you. I want you to know that, that no matter how far you try to run away from him, bro. He's got it. He's, he's, he's gonna catch you. I see the Lord that the Lord highlights me, man. I'm like, yeah, you gotta call on me, man. Yeah. But you're gonna preach, bro. Oh yeah. You're gonna preach, bro. Well, we and you're gonna prophesy. You're gonna prophesy. You know what that means? Ooh. I don't know. I, I can't assume. I'll back up. I mean... Lord's ministering to you. Come on, you better <laughs> hey, you better receive this, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I see, I see, I see, I see in your life, man, that you've been in and out of the streets for sure. Yep. But there's some, there's some, there's some people around you, man. The Lord wants to sever off, cause they're really, they're really holding you down, man. And you already know this. You already know there's some people around you, man. And your parents have even spoken to you about it, man. People wow. around you. I see even girls speaking to you about it, man. Wow. And it's like they see it, but you can't. You think these are your boys, bro? And I'm letting you know they ain't, man. God's warning you. And I'm letting you know what the enemy has planned for you. You know what I'm trying to say? And I'm letting you know, bro, that if you don't repent, there's gonna be consequences. You have to turn from your sin and get to know Jesus. You see, you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I understand. It's important, man. These dudes will lead you astray. They ain't your friends, man. But uh, get, to, get to know Jesus. I, I said that to you as a warning from the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because he warns you, and then you're going to see some stuff play out, and you're going to be like sitting there. And the last thing would be is being a holding cell or this or that, and be like, dang, man. I should have listened to the crazy guy at Meyer talking to me. But really. Y'all just, just in here helping people, huh? Yeah, it's a piece of gospel, bro. The Lord, man. That's just what we do, man. Yes, sir. And I'm not Jehovah Witness or Mormon, bro. I, you know why I do this? Because I was sleeping in my girlfriend's bed, bro, and Jesus appeared to me and changed my whole life, bro. And it literally, uh, when I seen him, bro, it woke me up so much. I moved out of my girlfriend's house, living with her for a year and a half. I moved with my Muslim father. I'm a Christian. I love an Islamic family. I'm sure you can see the attention there, right? And I'm letting, I say that as a testimony that there's life on it, bro. There's a life in Christ, bro. Something religion can't give you. It's only what Christ can give you, bro. It's the life of God. It germinates your spirit and you become born again of the water and of the spirit. In order, then you can inherit the kingdom of God. Then you can have a relationship Amen. with God when you're willing to repent. And not just Amen. repent of every little sin, that too, but repent of your whole old life. And what's your name? Trey. Trey. Trey dies and Christ lives. That's the day you'll be serving the Lord. That's the day you'll be serving. No longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Yep. You, know what I'm saying? you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to leave you. Because somebody else had told me this. Wow. Somebody else told me that. Uh, what, he just told you? Yeah. That's a prophecy, man. Now he sees a warning, bro, from the Lord.
You do any type of music? Uh, I don't know why, man. I see you. Uh, I see you like learning to do an instrument, bro. I see you learning like drums. Drums. I don't know. I see you playing drums for some reason. I'm not sure. But we prophesy in part, but I see you picking up an instrument, learn how to play it, worshiping God, worshiping God, bro. You see what I'm trying to say? Amen, bro. I believe God's gonna show you some things, do some new things. Before I was saved, there's some things I didn't do, bro, that I do now, where it's like crazy, where I'm like, man, I never thought I would be doing that or yeah. saying that or acting this way. But I'm doing it now. Somehow it happened. Jesus did that work in me. We need, we, we, we need more men like this. Step it up, many, man. It's not too many men like y'all. The harvest is plenty, man. The labor is like this. We need yeah. more men like this. The harvest. What the apostles were doing, bro. And what happened to them? That's They're, because men are too hard. Yeah. We too hard. We don't, we don't, we don't want to do this. Yep. You know? But, sorry about that. But it says, man, uh, oh, it's your oh, car. Oh, that, 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 oh, sorry about that. Yeah, we didn't have no idea. I thought that was your cart, bro, the whole oh, time. It was in the bag or something. I don't know. But anyways, man, uh, yeah, man, Jesus said the harvest is funny, man, for labor. We got to be the labors for the Lord, bro. He gave us the authority and anointing to walk in itself. That's what we do with it. You know what I'm saying? Right, kill. Yeah, you have identity, bro. You have identity. That's your problem still is you identify with the world, man. You still identify like, oh, I'm one of you, but you ain't, bro. You're trying to, that's why you feel like you don't fit in. Because you have a different spirit, bro. I'm from amongst them, man. Yep. And be Set holy, say the Lord. Side, man. Up. And I'm not talking about come, become a Hebrew Israelite either, because I, I see know. some people in your ear about that. Hey. I see. Me. That ain't what you. That's hey, what you're I called to be. Yeah, that ain't, ain't what you're called hey, to be. Hey, I'll be, you know. Seek the Lord for truth, man. I'll be. I, I ain't gonna lie. I'll be. I'll be trying to have a relationship with God. You have to have a relationship with God. Yeah, that's, yeah. Nothing wrong with yeah. that, man. That's awesome. But do you do it through Jesus, His Son, dying for you and rising again, or do you have to get it another way? I'm still on the track of, you know, I'm still trying to understand everything. Because there ain't no thief and robbers in heaven, bro. Yeah. Hey, you can't you can't get on the wall and then try to climb over. I'm still, I'm still in the process of learning yeah. everything, trying to figure everything out. So. Jesus said he tried to come any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Yeah, it is, it's true, man. He's the, only, he's the only way to God. And, like, here's the thing, too. Like, what other religion, what other God has came down from the throne, became like you and me, and then died for you on top of it while you were still an enemy to him? That's some crazy yeah, love, bro. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah. I mean... And it's the most historic book in the whole world. The Bible and the... Especially the gospel. Specifically the gospels. Yeah, yeah. There's so much history to it. Think about this. I don't you just want to leave you with one thing before I go. There were 12 apostles, right? One committed suicide, Judas. Mm -hmm. And then the apostle Paul came in. So there was 12 apostles. Think about this for a second. Every single one of them died for that. Died for the, seeing the resurrection of Christ. Other than one. Who was dipped in oil, uh, some people even say blinded, and he's put in the island of Patmos and wrote the book of Revelation, which you've probably heard of, right? Mm -hmm. Every single one of them apostles died, were martyrs for what they seen. Men who believed Man. in Yahweh, they were Jewish men who feared God. Why would they lie? Why would every single one of them lie and then on top of it die? Think about that. Really, really think about that. Every single one. Not even Islam can say that. Right. Not even Islam can say that. They can't say that. And you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian, bro. You a Christian too? Yes, sir. I'm yeah, I'm Lebanese actually, bro. Like, my my ethnicity is Lebanese. Like, my family is in Benjabel, which is the southern border of Lebanon, uh, the northern border of Israel. So, the point I'm trying to tell you is, is that I have family. All my family is Islamic. I believe right. in Jesus, and I preach the gospel to them, and I tell them, Muhammad can't keep bring you to heaven, bro. Muhammad didn't die for you. What did Muhammad do for you? Muhammad's dead, but Jesus, That's he's alive. alive. Come on. Amen. He rose from the dead, bro. And even Islam believes that. They don't believe he rose from the dead. He believe he, he, they believe he ascended to heaven. Amen, and Judas replaced him on the cross. Doesn't that sound stupid, bro? Why would the same apostles who died lie about that? So, so wait, hold on. So what is your race? I'm Lebanese. Lebanese. Yeah. So you ain't even from here. What's my my family here? ain't. Like his heritage and whatnot? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. My, my family ain't. I'm from, I was born in America, but my family is not. My right. family's from Benjabel in, in uh, Lebanon. From a village. Mm. Like my grandma and grandpa, like, they don't speak English, bro. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And you telling me you're a Christian. I'm a Christian, bro. Jesus appeared to me. <laughs> yeah. As God in the yeah, flesh. That's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. And you wanna know how many more you know two hundred Muslims in uh in Gaza just got saved by by having dreams of Jesus. Yep. You know, in Gaza the whole situation going on? You know, it, actually in, in Lebanon there's it's actually thirty five percent Christians. I wonder why. Jesus appearing to them. Because Jesus appears to them out there, bro. That's a Muslim-dominated territory, but Jesus is appearing to people, man, and he's grabbing his elect. Will all of them be saved? No. A lot of them are going to hell, unfortunately. It breaks my heart. That's why I'm out here doing this. 
not just for people who are unbelievers, but people who are kind of in your position. They're like on the, on the fence. They're walking to the line. They're walking. To, they're, they're dancing with the devil, bro. Dancing with the devil, playing that game. Because if Jesus was to come right now, you'd miss it. Yeah, bro. Unfortunately. And even Islam believes Jesus is coming, but they don't believe Jesus is God in the flesh and that He died for us. Where's your, where, where, where's your justification for your sin? Where does the sin come at play? You see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, Think about it. We've all sinned against God, bro. You, you need, you need. You can't just do whatever and get away with it. That's not how this works, bro. God is just and righteous. A holy God. God bless you, bro. Holy God, bro. If you go before a judge, if you murder somebody and you go before the judge, right? And you were to go before him and you were like, yeah, your honor, I do so many good deeds. I, I give to the poor. I do this. I do that. I do this. The honor is going to be looking at you and the family of the victim, of the victim that you killed. They're going to be looking at you like, what, bro? Nobody cares what you did. You murdered my son. You have, a, you have a mother crying over her son and the same dude trying to say he did all these good deeds. Nobody cares. Right. You're, going, you're doing 25 to life, bro. You're going to prison for the rest of your life till you die. He literally will tell you you're going to rot in your, in your cell. See what I'm trying to say? So, the point I'm trying to explain to you... Oh. What's up, good? The point I'm trying to explain to you, bro, is uh, when you know Jesus, he says, he takes... It's not that the 25 to life just goes away. Uh-uh. He took it for you. He said, get out the way. I'm going to take this punishment for you. That's what he did on the cross for you, man. He, love, took, he took, he took, he took, yeah, bro. And it's after love. he died, he descended to Sheol, hell. And he said, Satan, give me the keys to sin and death. Took back authority us, to what man. the man had lost in the garden. And then he literally came. He resurrected on the love, third day bro. by the power of God. Preached the kingdom of God love for 40 days man. on earth. Amen. Which means he was resurrected from the dead on earth, preaching for 40 days. That's recorded in every gospel. Mark, really Matthew, Luke, John. Sins, man. It's, a revel it's like deep, dude. It's, right. it's, people say it, but it's such like a deep revelation. Like he really died for our sins. He did it for yeah. you, for me. Yep. All of us, bro. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. He's, he was praying it's like so hard he sweating blood. Like, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. If there's any other way, let this cup pass for me. Yeah. He knew he had to go to the cross after our sins, man. Take on the sins of the world on him. Yep. The wrath of God. Because that's the first time he's going to experience uh, separation from God, right? Yep. And it's deep, bro. Jesus was like, man, but in his will, he still did it. He pressed through. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. It's powerful, bro. It is powerful. Very powerful. Amen, dude. Um, so the point I'm trying to say to you, bro, is like, if all this stuff is true, what are you doing? <laughs> like, where are you at? <laughs> Messing with girls, doing this, doing that, Come bro. Lord, Hanging out with friends, playing 2K. Forget all that, bro. I've been there. I've done it. Yep. Man. I've been there and done it. You know what you're doing? Wasting time, bro. I don't look, this is the crazy part. I don't smoke, I don't drink. That's good. I don't do nothing. Lord, he's sober, man. I don't know nothing. That's good. Stay sober, soldier. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I'm slowly trying to get myself there. I hear you. I hear you, bro. You play basketball? Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Looking for a little sleeve. You know, arm sleeve? With an elbow pad? I'll tell you what. If I cross you over, you got to follow G. No, I'm just playing. I'm just messing around, bro. I'm just messing around. But no, I'm the real man. I never want to get pride to get in the mix of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just messing around, bro. But uh, it's all good, though. Like I said, it's crazy because I heard the same thing before. You know, it ain't nothing yeah. that y'all doing wrong. Y'all doing everything y'all supposed to do. Like, yes, sir. As far as to try to save people, but people got to be willing to save themselves. Yeah, be willing to say yes, is what you said? No, you said willing to save yourself? People got to be willing to save themselves. There's only so much y'all can give out. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, you all got to have your you own can, oil. You can, you can show, you know what I'm saying, people the way. Some random, just exactly. trying to, you know, trying to talk about God. And I don't need to, I don't want to hear that right now. That's what they're going to say. I ain't gonna hear none of that y'all talking. Yeah. What does God do after that? You know, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna, it's gonna, yeah, it, it is. At the end of the day, that's between them. It's it's between them. God, yeah, Every man exactly. stands before God and himself. It's accountability. That's but me, I'm accountable before God for this situation, this conversation right now. So are you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now you know the truth. Therefore, now because you know, Jesus said the stripes are even worse for those who didn't know. Then when somebody comes and tells them, for how man, can people know unless the preacher is sent? Heavy, bro. And it's scary because even it's me, scary, like scary, even man. me right now, right? If I was to start continuing, if I was to say, nah, I'm going back to the, I'm 23 years old, bro. If I was to say, forget all that, man, I'm just, you know. You're 23? I'm 23, bro. You know, 26. 26? Yeah. Bro, if I, if, if I was to walk away right now from, from right. walking with Jesus and I was to go live back in the world, bro, and I would start smoking again with girls, all this stuff, right? Right. Bro, it would be really bad for me, man, on the day of judgment. Why? Because I knew. I understood. And yeah, I tasted you the heavenly gift. You think it'd be that bad? So Jesus said. 
Yeah. And I think he has some stance of talking for sure. <laughs> Man's the alpha and the omega. <laughs> Absolutely. Beginning man. and the end, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no. But hey, man, I love you, bro. I ain't gonna keep preaching to you, man. I just, oh, yeah, hey, yeah. for real, bro. Hey, man. I bless you, my friend, for oh, real, yeah, yeah. bro. You know what I'm saying? Say yes to the Lord, bro, for real, man. man. I ain't trying to, like, shove it down your throat, bro, but I care so much, bro, that I'm willing to, if you oh, were to hit, no. slap me in the no, face, it's bro. Crazy. It's crazy because I didn't heard this. Like, it came to me more than once. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I, I believe it. When are you ready to accept them, though, man? When you ready? Gospel track for you, man, right here. Oh. And check this out, man. You have a QR code and a Zoom Bible study, YouTube channel. I want you to check that out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Do you I believe in Jesus? Them, no. Why not? Nah, I'm not a fan. Well, not a fan of Jesus? Particularly of the way religion came to be upon us, you know? I hear you. Yeah. So what, like, how did, like, Jesus, the way that came across us, bro, is that just literally he came down in the flesh and died for you and rose again, bro. He died for your sin, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of, a lot of stories, a lot of, a lot of differing perspectives, you know, how it happened, you know, I just I take them all in, you know, I don't really like to subscribe to one, at least not at this point in my life, you know? How old are you? 20. 20? I hear you, I'm 23. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was 19 years old, bro, and the Lord appeared to me in the night. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ appeared to me in the night and completely changed my whole life, bro. Mm -hmm. And I feel you, it's kind of the same way, I kind of like, I don't know, like, how could God be a man? I had a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus appeared to me, all that stuff out the window, because mm -hmm. I was going to hell. I felt the separation of hope, and I knew there was no longer going to be any type of eternity with God, nor longer did I feel life. I knew I was, I knew I was, going, I was condemned for eternity, bro. Mm -hmm. Every day you wake up, you have hope, bro. Every day you wake up, you know what I'm trying to say, there's something within you that knows that there's going to be a tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm letting you know, bro, that like, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know God, if you don't know that he died for you and rose again, if you, if you don't seek him out now, and get to know who he is. I get you're maybe, you may not know, you may be a little confused now. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you don't seek him out though, bro, you're accountable for that. Mm -hmm. And you will spend eternity in the lake of fire mm -hmm. because of our sin. Yeah. We all have a moral code. We all know that we've sinned. All of us, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I see, I see you're humble, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I also see like, there's a little bit of like, you know what I'm trying to say? I feel like there's like a little bit of hurt in there. There's like a mother in there. Yeah, my mom, but like, nah, she, she was very religious, but um, it never really impacted my life in a negative manner. You know? manner? You yeah, think like, it was in a positive manner? Yeah, like I really enjoyed going to church, like the community and stuff, you know? So what do you think made you draw away from it? Just uh, like the whole warrior and all that stuff? I finally read the Bible. I read it cover to cover. Yep. The subject matter in there is kind of sickening at some point, honestly. Like, uh, you know, eat shellfish, put to death. Homosexual, put to death. You know, slaves, it's okay to own them. Okay to beat them as long as you don't kill them. I don't rock with that subject matter. Even, well, if it, even if it were to be true, do I really want to worship a God like that? Personally, no. Well, it doesn't say in the Bible that if you eat shellfish, you'll be put to death. It just says that there, it's a sin to do that, but it never says you'll be put to death for that. But if you commit adultery, you'll be put to death, mm -hmm. for sure. But yeah. also, as well, um, the reason they had slaves at that time, if you know anything at that time, you know, they had been, it's called Exodus, right? They were, they were taken out of Egypt from being enslaved, enslaved, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why God had it to where it was like that, where if they did something wrong, they could be a slave, is because it was the only way to be, be just for what happened, right? Mm -hmm. So for now, we have jail, right? If someone murders somebody, they deserve to go to jail, right? It was the same thing at that time. So rather than maybe you being put to death, you, you'd be someone's slave if you stole from them. That's mm -hmm. how you would pay back the, for what you did. It was a form of justice. Well, I mean, God in, in himself says himself several times in the Bible, he's an unchanging God. What he thinks doesn't change. You know, he's mm -hmm. morally the same as he was today, as he was at the, at the dawn of time. thousand percent. And so then I feel like uh, these certain things that we now see as unjustifiable, uh, I feel as if they were accepted now, it's not, it's just not a religion I would like to subscribe to with the certain things it says, you know, like... Uh, he... And not even that, just yeah. the whole, there's a lot of inconsistencies personally for me, like the whole inconsistency generally between like the, the first, the New Testament, the Old Testament, and like the morality of God. Mm -hmm. How do you become so much nicer in the, in the New Testament? He's supposed to be unchanging. Like I just, it's evident to me that like, to, it's in my opinion, that it's, it's a man-made religion and I don't think it's all bad, not at all, but I feel like I should just eat the, eat the meat throw away the bone, you know? Right. So just to give you an example of what you just said, you know, so until Jesus, the fullness of God hadn't been revealed, mm -hmm. right? We know the law came through Moses, but grace and truth through Jesus. Uh -huh. So when Moses brought down the law, it revealed the righteousness and judgment of God. Mm 
But when Jesus came, it revealed the fullness of God. He was the physical image of the invisible God. So now we see not just the justice and righteousness of God, which is to come still at the great white throne, mm -hmm. but now we also see the love, mercy, and, and the, uh, them aspects of God when Jesus comes because he was the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. Moses wasn't the fullness. He was a mediator between God and man, right? Mm -hmm. Brought down the law, yeah. and it judged you, and it made you realize that you deserve death for your sin. But see, the thing is this. We all deserve death for our sin, bro. We all deserve to go to hell because of our sin against God. None of us deserve heaven because of our good works. And the reality is this, that when Jesus came, he came while you were still a sinner, while I was still a sinner, while we were enemies to him. And he said, listen, even though you deserve this, I'm going to take that punishment for you. Mm -hmm. So it's not that he just threw justice and righteousness out the window. It's that, no, he took it upon himself. So all of them things were pointing to Jesus. And he was making man, the law wasn't there to sit here and condemn people and do all these things. No, the law was actually to make them a separate and holy people unto God. Mm -hmm. But the law revealed in man that they were sinful. Without the law, you wouldn't know that you were sinful. So why would God make inherently sinful creatures that deserve death? Mm -hmm. I mean, if he's omnipotent, he knows what we're prone to do. Yeah, he is. So why make us in the first place just to have us worship him? Just to thank him for us creating? Like, it's just, it seems like a big old ego trip, which you, you create people so they can thank you. Oh, you're so great. You're so, you're so amazing. Uh, and then, you know, you're going to die unless you, you worship me. Like, it's just, it's, I mean... I would, why would I personally want to subscribe to a God that, that is so cruel? Mm -hmm. You know, um, the Ark, pretty cruel. Killed everybody on Earth except for, what, a one family and then two of each animal? And then, like, what the animals do? They just got wiped out. Like, it's just... <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I've had the same questions before. Uh -huh. and the, but I'm telling you that a lot of the answers are actually, when you ask God himself, he'll reveal it to you. So, like, the thing is this, too. Do you, do you know what was happening at that time? What, about the, just how wicked the world was? Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, who, what is that situation? Not just the wicked. No, 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 bro. Like, you don't understand. Like, the angels came and slept with the woman, and there were giants in the earth. And it says that every imagination of man was completely and continually evil. It'd be like Sodom and Gomorrah everywhere. So, yeah, he had to wipe out the world because of how messed up it was. There was an ancient civilization before this world that we live in today, bro. And that was, the pre, that was predated before the flood. So God wiped it out, started out with a new pure bloodline from Noah, and that's where we all stem from. So it's, it's all dependent upon perspective as well. And we can both admit that both of our perspectives may be not the fullness of what it probably should be. Mm -hmm. And maybe what it will be in, in future years to come. Yeah. So the point being is, is asking God and saying, okay, is my perspective accurate and true in God? Show me these things and reveal these things to me. Because listen, even if I answer these questions for you, you might disagree with me still, and that's okay. Yeah. But the point being is, is what I'm trying to present to you, bro, is and make you recognize that even though we might not be able to receive some of these things now, mm -hmm. when you were a child, you, the way our perspective was with our parents is like, why are you disciplining me? I didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But the parents seen what you did and they knew it was wrong. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, it was wrong, but from their perspective, it was right. And their perspective, as you grew older, you realize, wow, they were actually good for doing that. Yeah. They should have got disciplined. Mm -hmm. Same thing with God. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I, we're, we're young right now, bro. We have a lot to learn yeah. in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I hear you, bro. I'm seeing eye to eye with you. I'm not trying to like put you down for what you don't yeah, no, or no, no, not believe. Wisdom, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate your perspective, bro. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really respect you, man. And I just want you to know that uh, Jesus, man, it's like so much more than just knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's a sincere love that while we were still enemies, he came and died for us, bro. Ain't yeah. no other God that did that, bro. Yeah. Ain't no other God that did that. Like Islam, they still will put you to death. Christianity, though, he said, dude, if you were to slap me right now, I'm commanded by the Lord to be like this, bro. Turn the other cheek, yeah. He said, if you, if you were to steal my coat, steal my little camera thingy, for safety. Mm -hmm. Also, I make content as well. Yeah. If you were to steal this from me right now, I'm, I'm, I'm commanded to give you my next coat. Mm -hmm. If you go one mile, I'm supposed to go two. Mm -hmm. So that's like, Jesus, man, he came and taught some pretty great things. And also as well, I want to remind you that the moral code comes from God himself. Like the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. that is where the, the moral code even comes from in the first place. Yeah. You know, well, we had moral code written within us, within our human nature. Mm -hmm. Like you go to steal when you were a kid and you were like, ah, you didn't know the Ten Commandments and all that, but you knew, okay, I shouldn't steal. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But the same thing with the Ten Commandments, without that, the world wouldn't have a moral code. Mm -hmm. Before that, they didn't. There was yeah. a lot of messed up things. Like every other nation had slavery. Every other nation had really wicked things. Matter of fact, they were sacrificing their children. Mm -hmm. So when God sent them into the wars that you were talking about earlier, when he went and take over the Canaanites, and by the way, I can say this because I'm half Canaanite, I'm half Lebanese. All right. It's actually my heritage, which is pretty crazy. So Israel, they came, into the, they came into the land with the giants, right? The Canaanites. Mm -hmm. 
and they were actually sacrificing to Molech. If you know anything about Molech, the god of Molech, the, the, the principality of Molech, the demon of Molech, he requires a sacrifice of children. Uh -huh. So they were actually making children sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So when God did that, that was actually, he was using them as a vessel and instrument to bring forth judgment upon them people for the wickedness that they were doing. Okay. Same thing with Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. It said their wickedness had reached heaven. And if you actually read the scriptures in Genesis, mm -hmm. it actually says their iniquity reached heaven and there was people being oppressed. So the thing is this, is that there was people that their cries were reaching heaven, bro. And God was like, okay, now it's time to judgment. It's time to judge. Same thing with Egypt. The reason he judged Egypt the way he did with all the plagues and all the different things was because there were, there were slaves in Egypt and they were literally uh, crying out and the cries of the oppressors reached heaven and he judged them. Yeah. So he's just just, bro. That's just who he is and he has to be just somehow. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you read the Old Testament, you have, to read, you have to read it in the lens of the full context of the whole picture. Because uh -huh. he's eternal, bro. He's an eternal God. So yeah, to us, death is like, dang, that's, messed, that's pretty harsh. Yeah. If I was committing adultery with my wife, I'd make that mistake, right? Mm -hmm. I'm commanded to be put to death, bro. That's messed up. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is, is that in the line of eternity, we can see why adultery is super messed up. Because mm -hmm. you see these kids, man, they're raised up and they absolutely are just like, I mean, dude, they, 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 they don't end up sometimes the best people. They end up with a lot of hurt. Mm -hmm. Some of them start doing bad things. Yeah. So what he was trying to do is keep the camp clean. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, when Jesus came, mm -hmm. what did he do? In, in uh, John chapter 8, with the woman who committed adultery, uh, didn't he, didn't he kiss her and tell her to, no, no, kiss her on the cheek or, uh, I don't recall. <clears throat> so what happened was, is that, uh, the woman came and she committed adultery and the Pharisees brought the woman to him and were like, should we not stone her? Mm-hmm. What and is said, it? like, he was without sin to cast the first stone. Yep. Yeah. So we actually, you know why? Because in the law, actually in the Old Testament, you can read it for yourself. It says mercy triumphs judgment. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So God's heart is mercy, but yeah, he has to have God's judgment. Like any cash on you, bro? I don't have any cash in my wallet. What's up? I don't have any cash in my wallet to help, help this guy. What's you have, up, you have any cash on you? I can pay you back. Yeah, what do you need, man? If you, if you, if you. What up? What up? You can spare. Hey, if you, if you grab something, I'll pay for it for you. I wanted to get to go to Coney Island. Well, I only have a card, brother. I can't do that. You can't look out without we can. You have any cash, bro? Just give it to him. I'll pay you back. Yeah. Give him a couple bucks or something, man. But the point I'm trying to say is this, man, is that Jesus, man, he literally died and rose again for you bro and it's simple as that man yeah. you know what i'm saying i love you man i'm not gonna keep you all night man i just wanted to it's cool to talk about it and see it from a different perspective yeah man i appreciate the, the wisdom and i love you know, yeah. I, I um i feel like even if it's not some necessarily hey, something i can subscribe to there's so much i can take away from it. like psalms and proverbs i feel like are excellent books i love reading those because there's so much wisdom inside of it so i do appreciate it and then um i will check this out and i'm gonna give some thoughts what you said Cool, man. And check out, if you ever feel led, man, um, check out the Zoom Bible study, too, or the YouTube channel. Check it out. Okay. God bless you, my friend, okay? What's your name? Uh, Makai. Makai. Kayla, bro. Okay. Yep. Pleasure to meet you, my friend. Sure. You're a Christian? Yeah. I believe. I was just thinking about that today. But, babe, answer this question, then. Uh, yeah. What you got? What church you belong to? What? I belong to uh, the body of Christ. Amen. Yeah, okay, but you... Don't come through any particular organization of the body. I mean, there's many. I go to I go to a couple different churches, and I also do a Zoom Bible study on this track right here. If you ever want to come. Okay, let me. What is that right there? Zoom Bible study. This is actually a camera uh, for safety and things like that. I don't I don't, I don't, need, I don't ask you a question. Then. What's up? But in the beginning, you talked about uh, God said, so let, "Let man, let us create man in our own image," right? Yep. And it's, let us create him. He 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 him. Um, Oh, he, she, them. You know, it's like it's like uh, uh, you see a male and a female. Where did the female come from when there was no in the beginning when there was no uh, no females on existed? Right. Where, where did the female right, concept well, come from? The female concept. So, number one, man was made in the likeness and image of God. Woman was made from man. That's what the Bible says, especially in the book of Corinthians. Paul even states he says. Man was made in the likeness image of God himself, but woman was made from man. So yeah. you're asking, where did woman come from? No, I'm asking the, the original Adam. It, yes. It said, it said, God, hold on, we got the Bible. Let's go. Yeah, it's in a disrespect like that, bro. You got to call people that, man. Just what, what do you mean? This guy's just disrespect those people with their minds. If I just don't disrespect this. Done. Let's just this, this go. This, this go. Got the Bible on you. I like that. Don't you have yours on? Yes, I do. 
Okay. It's on my phone though. But I got it in my heart most of all, right? It's supposed to. But it's gotta be in the that's true. Take Living physical. That's true. That's true. The only we do believe in, man, walking in the fruits of Christianity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Walking in love, walking in patience and long suffering and them different things. Absolutely. Peace. So I want you guys to answer this question. Uh, I don't have my glasses. But anyway, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Right. And the earth was, okay, it goes on and goes on. And goes on. Um, you got a Hebrew version? Yeah, I do. How come you don't have a camera on, my friend? You, oh, that's all him, He's with me. Yeah, I'm with him. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Right. And you're saying, why does it say he created him, male and female? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, created yep. them. He created he them. Right, because woman was made for man. Okay, some people believe that the statement of Adam being, he created he, he, created he him, they try to say that he, that was a hermaphrodite because he had two entities in him. He had a male and a female nature. Mm -hmm. Well, what no. Do you, what do you think? What, what do you? God took something out of his, but his, it was like we call it his rib, right? And he took his rib and he took it and he put it into woman who he made from dust. So therefore, because he took that out of Adam, Eve, woman, was made from Adam. Without, without, the, without okay. that extra okay. thing, no, she'd I, be a man. I, 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 I'm just trying to relate this to somebody because, in other words, it wasn't that Adam was a male and female. That's yeah. what you're saying. Adam was not male and female, no. Okay. And later on, he actually separates, he, he actually makes a statement that he created Eve from the rib of Adam. He does. Yes. Yep. Okay, but that was that's a strange statement. Some, but they use it. You you find people who, who don't believe in the word of God. They'll say, "Well, that was that Adam was hermaphrodite." Have you heard that argument before? I've never heard the argument of hem hermaphrodite. Mm -hmm. um, I'll definitely and look more look more into it for sure. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I kind of understand. I mean, it was just uh, that was just a beginning statement he made about the creation of Adam. Right. Eventually, he made it more plain that he actually took Eve from a rib of Adam. Yeah, okay. Yep. And okay. the cool thing is, too, is a lot of people think woman was made in the likeness and image of God. But in Corinthians, it says that man was made in the likeness and image of God, and woman was made from man. Therefore, no, you're right. woman, in the book of Proverbs, it says woman, you're, the wife is the crown of the husband, right? Yeah. The woman is the glory of man, but man is the glory of God. Absolutely. That's why Jesus was the perfect revelation of the Father. I, I agree. See, we have no problem I, because we believe, both believe in that. I read those yeah. scriptures. I'm just trying to explain it to somebody who is not a believer. Trying to question. You know, they try to they try point to, out. They're trying to do is make you doubt the scriptures that you know. What they're trying to say that God had a it was God, Jesus, and a woman. Yep. The the, the Holy Spirit was a woman, and that God oh, was had a no. had a had a relationship with a woman. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm just going to, you're going to encounter this. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit hovered upon the waters. Oh, absolutely. And man was created from dust. Absolutely. That doesn't even make any sense. So yeah, the man was made of the world. That's why when Jesus came, he said, I'm from above, you're from beneath. Yeah. Because man was made of dust. Man was you made of this studied, world. How long you been studying the scripture, brother? How long have you been studying? Um, I definitely say my grandma raised me up in the scriptures a little bit, although I didn't grow up in church, you know what I'm trying to say, but I still was raised up in the scriptures. Yeah. But really, I've actually only been studying really hard for four years. Okay. That's and good. God's really been with me. How about you? How about you? Is that, how long have you been studying? Same with the Lord. Yeah, how long have you been studying scripture? This. Oh, yeah, man. A lot, the past year is a lot. Okay. He's still good. growing. He's being yeah. discipled. Yeah, growing. yeah, yeah. Keep, keep taking it, because he, I'm checking him out. He's, he's pretty on. Oh, yeah. For sure. All right. Well, keep me in. Thank you for that advice. What's your name, brother? Brother Matthew. Matthew. Wow, it's a good name, man. Yeah. It's a good name. I love the book of Matthew, What's man. Love mean? all the parables in Matthew. Um, I gotta get going though, brother, because I know somebody wants to go get something to eat. Okay, take care. Bless you, my friend. Okay.